Hey everybody, it's Kyle here. Welcome back to the channel. Um, for this week's video, I want to talk about something that for the longest time I wasn't even aware that was an issue. So I wanted to make a video just to kind of point it out in case no, like you haven't heard about what I'm about to talk about. Um, what I'm about to talk about is person first language when it comes to speaking about someone with a disability. Um, that is to say, in my case, I'm a vocational assistant. So instead of saying I'm a disabled vocational assistant, I uh, you would say I'm a vocational assistant who is disabled. Same goes for teachers. Instead of saying, you know, you're a disabled teacher, you're a teacher with a disability. Or instead of a disabled disabled doctor, you're a doctor with a disability. Um, I know it kind of sounds very similar, like disabled doctor, doctor who's disabled. Um, they mean the same thing. They do, but the significance of person first language is to make the disability the secondary thing when you're talking about someone. Um, that is to down, not just necessarily downplay because disability is a very serious thing, but downplaying disability is like that it's a secondary thing. It's not the most important thing about a person. Um, it's focusing on what that person does um, and who they are while dealing with a disability than like a disability who also fights criminals as a lawyer, you know? Um, you want to say that that is a person who does all these amazing things while also having a disability. Um, the important, the less important thing is the disability. Um, I know it doesn't seem like that because society kind of makes disability this non-normalized thing that we have to make a big deal out of, um, where they have like the ADA and Title One and, you know, reasonable accommodations, which we are all entitled to. Um, but I hope one day we'll get to a point where disability is so normalized that like we don't have to use the ADA and Title One and Title Two and Title Three to do the things that we need to do. Um, so title one is specifically with employment, but we won't necessarily have to go out of our way to be like, oh, and hey, I need um, a stool to sit on because I can't stand for very long. It'll just be like a stool, like no problem. Like it'll just be so typical and so normal that like it's like it is what it is. Like, you know, companies won't, you know, have that fear of, you know, having to pay money to make accommodations um, where it'll just be, you know, it is what it is, like, okay, like, it'll just be a simple okay, and it will get done, um, because I think with society making, you know, disability such a big issue, and, you know, always having to advocate for yourselves with, well, myself, and, you know, ourselves as a whole, you know, general statement with disability, you know, person first language kind of is a good thing because it, it, you know, is that one, you know, while you're talking with someone and they're using for, uh, person first language, it's, you know, you're focusing on, they're focusing on themselves and you can focus on them and hear what they have to say rather than their disability, um, whether it be a wheelchair walker crutches and it could be an invisible disability that you have no idea. Um, that's also very common. Um, cause that was the thing when I was younger, that I would just think people would only see my disability rather than me and what I enjoy and what I do and what I like um, and who I am as a person. Um, it's bad to say, but for the longest time, you could say that I thought my of myself as, you know, a disability who's named Kyle rather than Kyle who also has cerebral palsy. Um and that's why I think for the longest time, you know, I didn't even, well, for the longest time, I didn't even know what pers uh, person first language was. And then when I f first heard about it, I was like, person first language, like, what the fuck is that? Like, who cares? They mean the same thing. Um, and that's really because, you know, I was such in a negative space with disability at the time myself um, that I couldn't see the significance of 
you know, downplaying disability to make it a secondary thing about a person. I was so like disability, 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 like that's all they see, that's what I am. When person first language kind of, you know, does the opposite and says, hey, you know, I'm Kyle and this is what I do and this is who I am. And I also have CP and walk with arm crutches and wear leg AFOs, leg braces, um, you know, and it kind of, that's just something that gets added into the conversation. That's not what starts the conversation, if you know what I mean. Um, it's not what opens the conversation like, oh, hey, I'm Kyle. Nice to meet you. You know how I, I have cerebral palsy um, or more so my point would be like, hi, I'm cerebral palsy. And, you know, I cause this human Kyle to wear leg braces and walk with arm crutches. Um, you know, I know that seems ridiculous, um, but in my head, that's kind of how I was at the time. So, the sooner that more people can understand the significance um, of person-first language, the better. And the beginning of kind of, you know, getting that out of people's heads that disability is this scary thing. Um, I don't mean that everyone has to use person-first language and not everyone's going to not everyone is going to, and not everyone with a disability wants you to. Um, some people really don't care. Um, but I really wanted to make this video just to make people more aware of the fact that there is a way you could talk about disability with someone who has that disability with also, while also downplaying the disability um, and focusing on the person who deals with those the effects of the disability, whatever they are, um, physical, mental, psychiatric, um, well, mental, psychiatric, emotional, um, stumbling over my words. Yay me. Good quality content here. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I just wanted to point out the fact that there is this thing that can be used, um, and because, well, do I really want to get into a whole thing? Um, well, really, I, what I really want to say is this will help help normalize disability to the point where we don't, it doesn't have to be this thing. One day, I hope, I hope, I hope that disability kind of disappears in the sense that like it'll still happen, but nobody will care. You'll, you'll still be normal whether or not you have a disability or not. Um, and really, <laughs> side note that goes along with this, please advocate for yourself. Advocate, advocate, advocate. Because the more people advocate, the more chances and opportunity people will see in us and see how great of people we are and the qualities that we possess. So we can continue to break into... Uh, you know, different, at all aspects of society, really, whether that be doctors, lawyers, judges, in the entertainment industry. I know that's very, from what I hear, that's very difficult um, to get someone with an actual disability to play the part of someone with a disability. Um, I know the guy from Speechless, I believe his name's Micah Fowler, uh, he actually has cerebral palsy. His character didn't speak and had to use a computer. He can speak, but they actually used him with a dis, you know, someone who has cerebral palsy to play someone who has cerebral palsy. You know, that sounds like it should be a no brainer. Like, get someone with a cerebral, you know, whatever disability that you're choosing to portray. Because if you really want, you know, an accurate, accurate uh, depiction of that, get someone who actually lives it. Um, I know there's, you know, creative con freedom because, like, Artie from Glee, Kevin McHale, um, he wasn't disabled. Don't get me wrong, I love Glee and I loved his character. And I love that Glee tackled um, disability as an issue. Um, but he wasn't disabled. Um, and I get that there's things that they couldn't have done on the show. Had he actually been disabled, he wouldn't have had um, some of the dance sequences and whatnot that he could do. 
I know there were some dream sequences where he actually was able to get out of the chair. And you couldn't do that, you know, t sometimes with someone with um, who's in a wheelchair. Cause they might not have the mobility. Um, but you could also find someone who has who uses a wheelchair. Because I have a friend who uses a wheelchair, but also balances or you know goes back and forth from the wheelchair to walking with no, like just walking um just because sometimes he gets tired and it's easier to use the wheelchair he also has cerebral palsy um so there are things you you know you could find potentially find an actor who could you know still use the wheelchair and be authentic and someone who could get up and move the dancing may not be as smooth but you know that is an option i'm a I'm not saying that they made the wrong choice because I'm not some I'm not the casting director of Glee, so I you know and Artie did a great job as the you know, <laughs> Artie, Kevin McHale <laughs> did a great job as Artie, but you know I wish we could see more people with disabilities acting on television because the more you see it, the more normal it becomes, and uh, millions upon millions watch um, television, so. The more they see it, like, the better. Um, the more we advocate for ourselves and as a whole, whether, whatever type of disability, just in general, if the more we advocate for ourselves, the more people will take us seriously and give us opportunities. Uh, I even, that's what I did like about, um, I believe it was Descendants 2, they had a girl um, in a wheelchair for a few of the musical numbers. Go Disney. Um... But yeah, I really just hope that this video helps you see that person first language could be an important thing or is an important thing. Um, I'm not going to say that it's going to be easy to do. It wasn't easy for me to switch over to the idea of person first language um, at all, really. It took me a very long time. Um, still kind of new and I still slip up and I'm someone with a disability. Um, but the more that we use it and the more normal it becomes, you know, soon it, just like it is what it is. Um, I want that disability as a whole to get to the point of it is what it is, like whatever, we'll include you, we'll accept you. And like, like, what's the big deal? Um, but we'll get there. I have faith in us as a society that we will get there. Um, but I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please um, share it, like it, comment. You know, if you don't use person first language, let me know. If you do, let me know. Um, let's start a conversation. Um, be sure to like and subscribe. Um, hit the bell for notifications for a new video every Tuesday. Um, and thank you for watching. Sorry I keep saying um, but <laughs> bye.